Hello, good day. I am Samuel Babatunde, and you're welcome to today's Agri class. And today we're going to be looking at the topic forms of agriculture. So it's just basically a continuation on the previous topic that we did on agri science, which is the form of agriculture. And we're going to be narrowing it down today to livestock rearing and apiculture. If you remember, or if you followed us in our previous class on forms of agriculture, we talked about the crop cultivation and the horticulture. We look at the meaning of crop cultivation, the various factors that affect crop cultivation, that is the factors that affects the choice of a farmer in crop cultivation. And then we also look at horticulture. We look at the meaning of horticulture as the act of growing or the practice of growing or cultivating vegetables, fruits, and the flowering and plants that's the ornamental crops then we look at the divisions of horticulture where we say it includes the words the pomology the olericulture and the floriculture so today we're going to be moving to another form of agriculture another form of agriculture and the two we're going to be looking at today for the purpose of course of our time is just the livestock rearing and the apiculture so we're looking into livestock rearing and apiculture like I told you, I am by name Samuel Babatunde, and I will be your teacher on agricultural science. And like we said, we know that agriculture simply refers to the rearing of animals and also the what, cultivation of crops. It is neither centered on the rearing of livestock or animals alone, neither is it centered on the cultivation of crops alone, but it involves what, the rearing of animals and also the cultivation of crops. So agriculture is actually broad. It's not just one aspect. Now, we are going to be considering a form of agriculture, which is the livestock farming. The livestock farming. Now, this livestock farming simply refers to as the rearing or keeping of livestock for man's benefits. The rearing or keeping of livestock for man's benefits. Now, I'm using the word livestock, livestock, livestock. I know you'll be asking, what does livestock mean? Now, livestock simply means was farm animals. So in other words, livestock is also known as farm animals. So what I'm just trying to say is that livestock farming simply refers to the rearing or keeping of farm animals for man's benefit. Now, why I use the word farm animal is because, take for instance, animals like lion or tiger are not farm animals. We refer to them as wild animals and you can't keep them in your farm. So that is the why we use the word farm animals and that is what livestock represents livestock so livestock simply represents what farm animals animals that are reared in the farm so livestock farming just simply means the rearing or the keeping of livestock for man's benefits or you can say the rearing or keeping of farm animals for man's benefits for the purpose of your exam these two definitions are correct now livestock is known as farm animals and examples of this livestock includes you have the cattle the sheep the goats the pigs the poultry and the rabbits so all these are examples of livestock. Now, like I said, livestock farming involves the rearing of what animals. As a farmer, you can decide to rear cattle, you can decide to rear sheep, you can decide to rear goats, you can decide to rear pigs, you can decide to rear poultry or rabbits. Now, your choice, that is the choice of you as a farmer or the choice of a farmer to engage in any of this livestock depends on some factors it depends on some factors and these factors include the land availability availability of land the water availability diseases and religious belief of people now i'm going to pick in this point and i'm going to be explaining them as simple as possible now look at your land availability take for instance i i as a farmer or you as a farmer want to engage in maybe the um, livestock clearing of the cattle sheep and goats and you want to maybe center on maybe 50 50 of each of these animals but now you have a limited land space your land is not that big do you don't have any choice but what but to reduce the number or you reduce the what the um this the types of animals you want to rear. take for instance before you had it in mind to rear cattle sheep and goats but because of this limited land i am available i'm listening land you do what you limit yourself to maybe rearing of only cattle or rain of only sheep, or rain of only goats. Now you can see that land has actually what affected your practice. So that's why we say that the 
livestock farming is affected by many factors. Land actually affects what livestock farming. Like some farmers want to maybe engage in rearing of 1,000 animals, but the land they have might not be enough for them to rear 1,000 animals. So what do they do? They have to reduce it to like 500 to allow what? To allow more space because it is not good for you to keep animals together choked up in a space. They need what space for them to move and for them to what fend for themselves. So land availability is a factor that affects what livestock farming. Also water availability, water availability. Now rearing of li um, livestock requires what water because these animals requires water for survival. They require water for survival. So for you to rear animals now, you need what you need good what water supply. You need good water supply. Now in places whereby there is no water supply now, you see that livestock rearing will be limited there. The livestock rearing will not be will not be um, practiced as much as it is practiced in a place where water is wet very very much available. So water availability actually affects livestock farming. Another um, factor that affects livestock farming is the disease. The disease. Disease affects livestock farming. Disease affects livestock farming. Because you notice that there in some parts of the country, those in some parts of the world, whereby a particular disease is what is dominant. That is, a particular disease is dominant there for some particular animals. And now you're wearing this particular animal in that kind of a place where you are exposing these animals to the disease. And when these animals get infected with this disease, you as a farmer will lose because this animal will eventually die. So disease also affects what? The livestock farming. And religious belief of people, like we know we have various um, belief, we have, uh, we have various religion in this, in this country, even in the world. We have Christianity, the Islam and the rest. Now take for instance, as a Muslim person, you notice that they don't deal with what? They don't take pigs. Now, so in other sense, this, might, this belief might just affect what? Or their religion might affect them rearing pigs. So they won't even venture going into what? Pig rearing. Instead, they just rear out other um, animals. So you can see that religious belief actually affects our what? It affects our, life, um, our choice of livestock farming. Even different traditions also. Some traditions what prohibits the um, rearing of some animals. And so this will affect what the farmer's choice in choosing the type of livestock he wants to rear. Now, like in Nigeria, cattle, sheep, and goats are mainly reared in another region. Why? Due to abundance of grasses and prevalence of trypanosomiasis in the southern region. Now, if you notice, most of all these cattle, the sheep and goats are reared in the northern region. The ones reared in the southern region are actually less compared to the ones reared in the northern region. Now, why? Because what? although in the southern region, there are more grasses there, but there are also grasses too in the northern region. But the major reason is that there is prevalence of what disease in the southern region that attack these what animals, and this disease is known as trypanosomiasis. Trypanosomiasis simply refers to a sleeping sickness. It simply refers to a sleeping sickness, and this sickness is caused by a fly known as a fly. Now, once this fly bites these animals, they they get what infected with this disease, and this disease can actually cause death. So, because of the prevalence um, infection of animals in the southern region. Most of the cattle, the sheep, and the goats are mainly reared in the northern region. Now you've seen that this disease now, like I told you, which is a factor, has affected what livestock farming in the southern region, making it to be more what practiced in the northern region because of the what? Because of the disease. Now the purpose of production and type of animal raised determine the system of production to be adopted. Now, take for instance, I want to venture into poultry. Now, my purpose of going into poultry might be for what? For the meats and also for egg. Remember, birds lay egg. So now, definitely, this will determine the system of production I will adopt. Because now I want to venture into poultry, I will not adopt um, the system of production for, for cattle when I'm trying to go into poultry. No. So my system of um, production will definitely be affected. As you are going into poultry, what do you need? You need what? You need cage cage that can what, house the beds and also house the eggs that they lay to prevent the eggs from what, from breaking. But if I'm going into um, livestock farming like the cattle rearing or the goat rearing, all I just need is a, what, it's something like a pen. I can even practice what, a free range um, farming practice. 
So you see that the purpose or the type of animal you want to raise actually determine the system of production you have to adopt. Like in the northern part of Nigeria now, traditional pastoral system is used by what Fulani headsmen. What this means is that you see this, you know, see this Fulani headsmen now in different parts of Nigeria. What do they do? They would they allow their cattle to move freely to graze on grasses. Now, this is a traditional pastoral system. As they move, where, anywhere they see grasses, anywhere they see um, all these grasses, they feed on it. Now, this is because what they are practicing what, and they are rearing cattle. Now, you see that system of production is what free range practice. The flanning headsmen raise cattle and sheep via what traditional pastoral system, a traditional method. Now, they move from place to place in search of fresh grass and water for the animals. So, the total, in essence, the type of animal you're hearing actually determine the, words, the system of production you're going to adopt. Because, you know, livestock farming is not just, you don't just um, begin to rear all the livestock in a particular way or with a particular system. No, each of these livestock has their own specific system by which what, you can rear them. The goat has its own system, the cattle has its own system, poultry has their system, and likewise the rabbit has their system. So in, if you want to pick any of these livestock to rear, you have to what, adopt the system that is peculiar to this livestock. Now some livestock farmers adopt modern system of confinement. You know, I told you that the Fulani headsmen, they adopt the, what, the traditional pastoral system, that is the free-range farming. They allow their animals to move from place to place in search of what, food and for water. But now, in the modern days, now you see that modern livestock farmers, now they adopt for this system of confinement. In essence, what I mean is that they keep their livestock in cages, in pens, in fence area, like they fence it. Although some of, sometimes they practice this free range, but this free range doesn't involve moving from place to place. The free range will just be in, what, in a particular confinement, like in a fenced area. And in this fenced area, there will be, what, there will be grasses available for these animals to feed on. So these modern farmers now, they do what? They practice a system of confinement. They put their animals in cages, in pens, or in fenced areas, and they provide food and water for their, what, for their animals. And even medical, what, medical for, uh, resources are provided. Now, livestock may be kept for meats, like I told you, livestock can be kept for meats. You actually rear your, your animals to get meat or for milk, like your cattle. You rear your cattle, you can rear your cattle for milk production or for hides and skin. Hide and skin is in production of bags, uh, shoes today. You can actually rear your animals, animals like the cattle, the sheep, for hides and skin or for research purposes. For research purposes. So, this is. It's on livestock farming. Remember, I told you that livestock simply refers to as farm animals, and therefore livestock farming simply refers to as what the rearing of farm animals for man's benefits. And I gave you examples of these farm animals and the factors that affect them. I told you land availability, the water availability, diseases, and religious belief. And I went further to explain more on the disease, like in the southern region of the country, because of the prevalence of trypanosomiasis, which is the sleeping sickness, sleeping sickness more of these cattle are reared in the northern region and also i told you that the type of animal you're going to rear determines the system of production you adopt like the fulani hates me now they adopt the traditional pastoral system where they allow their animals to move from place to place to feed and to get water but in the modern days now these modern farmers modern farmers is a system of confinement where their livestock are kept in cages in cages and they are the one that provide what the water the medical and um, resources, and even the food that the animal requires. Now we're going to move into the second part of today's lesson, which is the apiculture. So the second part of today's lesson is the apiculture. From the word here, api and culture, api and culture. This apiculture simply refers to as what beekeeping. It just simply means beekeeping or bee rearing. The word api there refers to as the bee, and the culture means the keeping or the rearing. So simply. Apiculture involves keeping bees to produce honey and wax. That's just simple definition of apiculture. Apiculture refers to the what? Keeping of bees. And like you know, we know what bees are, to produce honey and wax. To produce honey and wax. Now, beekeeping is done in an area free from noise and pollution. Like we know, bees do not like noise at all. So for you to rear bee, you have to rear them in areas that are free from noise areas that are free from noise completely that is where bees are red you won't see um, bees red in a residential area no 
you can't see bees where in residential area. Like you know, residential area places where we live, or we used to be rare in um, industrial areas. No, bees are reared in places, in areas where what noise is not available and where pollution is limited. Now, a queen, I said beekeeping is done in an area free from noise and pollution. A little a queen and some flowers and around are necessary, yes. Beekeeping actually require what? Just a little space. A little space is just required for what? For beekeeping. When you want to raise bee, you don't need a large space or large land area. No, you know bees, these bees are actually insects. For, for you to raise bees, you just need a small space. Just a limited space and space is what you need. A location where bees are kept is called what? An apiary. That's the location where bees are kept. It's called an apiary. The location. That is, let's take for instance now, maybe bees are kept in, um, in an area in our, in our environment. We call that area an apiary. That's the location where bees are kept. Now, these bees actually, you know, these bees are actually grouped into different forms, into different stage. Like they have different stage. You have the queen, you have the drone, and you have the workers. So in each, when you are rearing bees, you'll notice that what, these bees are actually of different types. They're of different types. You have the queen. The queen is the one that what, that give rise to new um, bees. It's the queen that produces what new, new, new bees. The queen is the one that's, give rise or give birth to new bees then the drone the drone is like the male the mature male why the queen is like the mature female so the drone is like the mature male bee it is this drone that mates with the queen so that the queen can give rise to what to a new bee then you have these workers the workers are just they're the ones that do what that carry out the activities what in this what in this bee um in the bee um, community so beekeeping simply refers to the what to the rearing or the keeping of bees to produce honey and wax. And like we know, honey is actually what is very, very important. Honey is very important. Honey has a very, very sweet taste. And this honey can be sold for what? For money. So you see that agriculture actually deals with what? Deals with production. Because you are keeping bee, you're not just keeping bee for fun. You're actually keeping bee for man use. And what do you get from bee? You get honey from bee. And this honey is used in what? This honey is used as food. We use honey as food. We take honey and we know honey is sweet. Everybody likes honey because honey is sweet. And also wax. Bee also what produces wax. And we can use this wax even in our in textile industry. These wax are used in our textile industry. And now I say bees are kept in a hive. That is where bees are kept is called a hive. And there are variations in the type of hive used. So where you keep bees are known as hive. Like I told you, a location where bees are kept is known as an apiary. Take note. An apiary is a location where bees are kept. But now, the place, like the, 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 um, the, the, all I put is down, the instruments where the bees are kept, like a place where they are kept, is known as what? It's known as the hive. Now, look at what hive means. Hive is a rectangular wooden box filled with movable woods or plastic frames, which can hold what? Wax. Like we know, bees produce honey and wax they produce honey and wax so this hive is like a rectangular wooden box that is filled with movable wood now this movable wood bar will enable you to be able to remove the honey and the wax produced by this bee you know these bees are insects and they can fly so when this bee produce the honey or they produce the wax this wax will definitely would fall on this wooden um this movable woods now when this um honey or the wax fall on this movable wood in order for you to remove them you have to make sure ensure that this wood are movable so you can remove them anytime to collect your honey or to collect your wax like i said the bottom of the box contains okay yeah like i said it's a rectangular wooden box filled with movable wood or plastic frames each which hold what the wax now the bottom box contains the queen and most of the bees while the upper boxes contains just honey now the the lower box that's where like the hive now, you know, I thought it's like a rectangular box, a rectangular wooden box. Now this hive is like divided into like two um, portions. You have the lower box and the upper box. And the lower box, that's where you have the bees where you are kept. Now in the upper box, that's where what the honeys are being kept, or where the honey, which contains the honey. Now if you want to extract this honey, what do you do now? All you need to do is just to remove the movable wood. You just remove them, that's in the upper box, to collect what's your honey. 
And like we know, I told you that honey is actually what actually a source of food to man, and it also has medicinal value. Honey has medicinal value. Wild bees wax could be used to produce candles and cosmetics. You can use the bee wax to produce candles and you can use them to produce cosmetics. So a hive is just simply a rectangular box filled with movable woods or plastic frame, which in which what the bees are kept. And this hive is constructed in such a way that the bees are kept in the bottom boxes and the um, honey are contained in the what in the top box, that's in the upper box, so that's what you can collect your honey anytime you want, anytime you wish, you can extract the honey. And like I say, the honey has medicinal values. Why the wax which is produced by this bee is used in production of candles and in cosmetics. So with this, we've come to the end of today's lesson on the forms of agriculture where we look at the livestock farming and we also look at the apiculture, which is the bee rearing or beekeeping. So I just have an assignment for you. The assignment says, one, what is apiculture and where are bees bred? That is, you should tell me where bees are red. That is the container or the place where bees are kept, where they are red. Now this assignment is to be submitted on the WhatsApp group page. So before we go, we'll do a brief recap on what we've discussed. Remember, we discussed about the forms of agriculture. We looked into livestock and apiculture. Now, in that livestock farming, we say livestock simply refers to as farm animals. And the livestock farming simply means what? the rearing or keeping of farm animals for man benefits or for man's use. And like we know, examples of these livestock include the cattle, the sheep, the goats, the pigs, poultry, which are the birds and rabbits. And we see that some factors that affect livestock farming. And these factors include the land availability, water availability, diseases, and religious belief of people. Then we look at the reason why most of our cattle and our sheep are actually red in the northern region. And we say this is mainly due to what's prevalence of disease like the trypanosomias, the sleeping sickness. Then we look at the different system adopted in what in rearing of farm animals, like the traditional system, whereby the farmers practice what's a free range system. They allow the animals to move freely to find the fresh grass and water. And in the modern and the modern farmers practice the word system of confinement where they keep their animals in cages and pens and they are the one that provide the animals with the food with the water they need and i said the purpose of we rearing livestock might be for meat it might be for milk it might be for hide and skin or for research purposes now we look into what apiculture or beekeeping where we say apiculture simply refers to the keeping of bees to produce honey and wax. And like I said, beekeeping is actually done in places where there is no noise. That's a place that is free from noise and pollution. And we say you only need a small space for actually rearing bees because we know that bees are insects and they don't have like large body weights. So you actually require a small space for beekeeping. And I say a location where bees are reared or kept is called an apiary. But now the container where bees are kept is known as a hive. And we say a hive is a rectangular wooden box filled with movable woods or plastic frames which hold the bees and the wax. And this hive is divided in such a way that you have the lower box and the upper box. Now in this lower box, that is where your bees are kept. And in the upper box, that is where your honey is kept so that you can extract the honey anytime you wish to. And also the wax that is gotten can also be extracted. And this wax is used in the production of um, your con candles and in cosmetics. And then you can use your honey. Honey serves as food and also has medicinal value. And then I give you an assignment that should tell me the meaning. What is apiculture? And it should tell me where bees are. Like a place where bees are red is called what? Where are bees red? Now this assignment, I told you, is to be submitted on the WhatsApp group. So with this, we've come to the end of today's lesson. Please, if you're following this, um, if you're watching this video on YouTube, ensure you subscribe to the channel to get more of our videos on agricultural science. I am be the one taking the agricultural classes and if you can follow us on our zoom classes it will be better it will be okay and even good for you to help you what's in your forthcoming examination i still remain somewhere but sunday thank you and god bless you